Around 1977, Steve Wozniak created Sweet 16 to reduce code size and make it easier to handle 16-bit pointers and arithmetic for his Apple integer basic. Uh, he'd referred to it as the 6502 Dream Machine in an article, and I've ported this to the Commodore VIC-20 so that we can play with it on our VIC. Sweet 16 is described as a pseudo-machine interpreter, which is probably a better description than a virtual machine because it shares native memory for storage and is designed to switch back and forth between itself and native 6502 code. The pseudo-machine has 16 16-bit 16 registers, with five of them having a defined function. So the way it works is you set out your 6502 source code, and then when you want to run some Sweet 16 code, you JSR to an address, which then starts the Sweet 16 interpreter, that will then execute the following code as Sweet 16 code. And then when you're finished, the uh, Sweet 16 has a RTN return instruction, which tells it to go back to uh, executing 6502 code. So the, uh, the code's pretty compact. Uh, the interpreter uh, and everything only takes around 300 bytes. Could have been made a little bit more compact, but of course, this had to fit in a ROM, so therefore they couldn't use, uh, couldn't use self-modifying code. If we look at the Sweet 16 instruction set, we can see how it's split between register operations and non-register operations. So on the right-hand side, we can see that non-register operations, they're mainly branch instructions, uh, mainly conditional branch instructions, uh, although there are two uh, branch instructions. Uh, to a subroutine and from a subroutine, and that's a Sweet 16 subroutine. If we wanted to go back to uh, native 6502 code, we could use the RTN instruction at the top, and that would allow us then to uh, call a 6502 uh, subroutine, and then when we're ready, we can continue with the uh, Sweet 16 interpreter to, to go back and uh, continue execution of Sweet, uh, Sweet 16. On the left-hand side, we can see uh, that all those instructions have an RN. So that's the register that we want the operation to work on. So for example, on the first one, set RN, uh, that will set the register that we choose to the value that we choose, the 16-bit value. So for example, if we used uh, 1, 3, then that was set register 3, and then followed that by a 16-bit value, then that would... Um, set register 3 to that value. It uses the same endianness as uh, the 6502 itself, so that keeps everything simple. And some of the instructions, such as um, the indirect instructions you can see, uh, the first two, the first four indirect instructions increase the register being referred to either by 1 or by 2 for the double, and then things like the, the pop and the STP commands and the pop D commands, they increment or decrement the, um, the register as, uh, as appropriate. So uh, it all works really well. The compare instruction uh, compares the register against the accumulator. Most of these act against the accumulator. And, um, and then it puts the result of the compare in register 13, and then we can use that again for uh, for, for further uh, for further comparison. This table, as well as a link to further information about the instruction set and about Sweet 16 generally, uh, can be found on the accompanying article on the Tech Tinkering website. The original Sweet 16 source code has been published a number of times, including in the uh, November 1977 edition of Byte Magazine. In this article, Steve Wozniak encourages users to modify Suite 16 and even to port it to other processors, so hopefully he won't mind its being ported to the VIC. However, despite this and the fact that the code is widely available, it's still probably under copyright and therefore a port relies on patching the original source code rather than supplying a complete version. So uh, the, um, the port itself, I can't claim too much credit for because essentially it's just changing the locations in zero page where the uh, registers are stored and then aligning the code so that part of it fits into a single page. 
the majority of the work was really just converting the source code to assemble using the uh, XA assembler that I uh, that I prefer. So if I show how the uh, patch works, so I've downloaded uh, the original source code. So as a base, I've used the uh, the version of the source code on the 6502.org website. So um, we've downloaded that, and then if I run the patch, so that will patch it to create suite16.a65, and it'll use my patch suite16-vic20.patch. The patch is available in a GitHub repo, and I've also included a, a test, some test code. If we now look at the patched code, we can see that uh, we've got suite16.a65 here. And the first thing about the patch is this location here. So I've stored the registers, the 32 bytes for the 16 registers, uh, from location, zero, uh, for location 2B in the 0 page. Uh, so this will prevent BASIC from working properly. It will allow the sys command to work, which is great, because that will allow us to still execute machine code from the BASIC prompt. But, uh, but if you want to run BASIC properly, or at least uh, have uh, some tokenized BASIC in memory, then we'll have to save and restore the, uh, the zero page as appropriate. But for this demonstration, uh, this, uh, I haven't needed to do that. And, um, if we look a bit further down, we can see here that the following code has to be within a single page. And that's just because of the way the dispatch works, that it keeps the page the same and just alters the offset. So there we are, down to that point there. And therefore, I had to take that into consideration when I was creating the test code. And here's the test code. So I've chosen location 1288. Two reasons I've changed, chosen that location. One is that it allows that part of the code in suite 16 to align up to the correct place so that it's uh, contained within a single page. But also, this location is a good location because it should work with different memory configurations. So um, that just makes it generally easier for different systems. So we'll have a look at the code itself. So it starts here with our telling, uh, our starting the, the test. So we run the test and then we return. We want to keep this as small as possible because then it makes it easier to line up this bit of code here, which is the actual Suite 16 interpreter. And then the test code itself, uh, I won't go through all the test code itself. It's largely just talking about how it uh, sets up the tests and, uh, and runs them. If we have a look at some Suite 16 code, this will be a little bit more interesting. So this is the first part that we need to take care of when we're running Suite 16 code. So we're jumping uh, to a subroutine SW16, which if we go down here, and there we are, that's the start of the Suite 16 interpreter. Okay, so SW16, and you can see the first thing it does is save the um, 6502 registers. So, um, and that was an ad an ad another addition, actually, to the original code, which doesn't do that. So, there we are. That's the code for saving and restoring the registers. And that's because on the Apple, uh, they could use a kernel routine to do that, but that routine isn't present on the VIC-20, so we just put it in by hand. Right, okay, so we've uh, JSR to SW16, and the first instruction of the Suite 16 code is to set R1 to the source address. So this is the code we want to copy. So this is a mem copy function. Uh, so we're setting it to an area where hello is kept. We can have a look at that location. And there it is down there where I've got some other strings. But that's the string we're going to be copying in any case. Right, and then next instruction is to set R2 to the destination address. So that's up here, TDST. And then the length of the string that we want to copy. Uh, so you can see it's quite easy to remember the, uh, the codes for, um, for suite 16, 11, 12, 13. So 1 is set, and then 
one, two, three of the registers that we want to set it to. And then we want to load a byte from memory pointed to by R1. And then the LD command automatically increments R1, so we don't need to increment it. And then we're going to store at R2. And again, it automatically increments R2, so we don't need to increment it. And then we're going to decrease R3, which is our length. And then we're going to branch, if not zero. So if we haven't got to zero, then we're going to go back four places and continue the work here. So it's a really tight loop that just uh, loads a byte, saves a byte, moves to the next location, and then increments, increments where it's going to save it to. And then at the end of the code, we've got the return instruction there, and that will return us back to 6502 native code. And then the rest of this routine just checks that that copy works successfully. And then uh, I've also done a multiply example, which is very similar to the previous one. We're setting instructions, uh, setting registers, and then it's using a typical copy, sorry, a typical multiple add to, uh, to do the multiply. Uh, this, as you can see, is much simpler than if we were to do that using 6502 code. Uh, because this is actually multiplying a 16-bit number. So the two numbers we're multiplying are 255 times 100. Uh, so therefore we're getting, sorry, it's not multiplying, it's multiplying two 8-bit numbers, but the result is going to be 16 bits. So that's the result there, 639C. Yes, so if space is a bigger consideration for you than speed, then Sweet 16 can be really good for that. Uh, so it's just a question of whether you'll make enough savings in in memory through the code will outweigh the size of the interpreter to start with. But, um, but Steve Wozniak said that this is a, it saves him quite a lot of storage in his basic interpreter, so it was worth doing. In any case, it's fun to play with, and, um, and it can make programming a little bit simpler because we're working with 16-bit arithmetic straight away, and the instruction set itself is well-defined and, uh, and, and quite nice to work with. And I wanted to show one last example, and that's to negate a number. Uh, the reason I want to show this is that it shows how we can switch out of Sweet 16 code and back into native 6502 code and then continue processing in Sweet 16 before finally coming back to 6502 again. So I'll show how this works. So we're going to neg negate a number. So to negate a number is uh, just essentially just running a, a two's complement on it. It's the same thing. I'm going to set register 1 to A, set register 3 to result, and then I'm going to load register 1, uh, load the accumulator, sorry, with the contents of register 1. I'm going to store the accumulator indirectly to uh, to result. So using the contents of register 3, I'm going to store that into result, which is down here. There we are. So there's a word uh, set aside for the result. Okay, so we're loading A, and then we're storing A in result. And then we're returning to native 6502 code, and then we're running a subroutine which will get the ones complement of result. So we look at this. Okay, so that's just a simple routine to get the ones complement of result. And then if we go back up here, we carry on with Sweet 16. And then well, the reason I'm using pop D here is that, as you may remember on the previous example, when we load and store, uh, sorry, when we load and store indirectly, it increments the the register that we're using. Uh, but the problem is I don't want to have to keep on decrementing it again. So here, if I do a pop D at R3, then it decrements automatically register 3 by 2 before it uses it. So that makes up for the increase by 2 that STD um, R3 enacted on it. So pop D R3, and then we're going to increase R0, so the accumulator. The reason we're increasing it is that the 2's complement is really just a 1's complement, add 1. And that gives us the 2's complement. 
and then I'm going to store the result in the location pointed to by R3 and then return and then this code here just checks the result to see if, uh, if that's worked properly. So um, yeah, so there we are. So that gives you a, a bit of an example of how uh, Sweet 16 code works. We can now return to the command prompt and assemble the test routine. And then, as you can see, this creates a .prg file, test-sweet16.prg. That can be loaded on the on the VIC-20 directly. So if we switch back to the VIC-20 now, at the start of this video, uh, you saw me loading something, but I didn't say what it was. It was actually the test routine that I've just uh, assembled. So if we execute it, 4744 is the decimal equivalent of hex 1288. And there we are. It goes through each of those three tests, and we can see they all pass. It was quite nice creating the test file because it was a good way of playing around with Suite 16, uh, seeing what it can do, and uh, and how to use it. Uh, so hopefully you found it interesting. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed playing with it. It's also given me a few ideas from other small interpreters that I might create on uh, on the Vic 20. So uh, if I do that, I'll uh, I'll let you know in the future. Uh, for the moment, have a look at the associated article and um, do subscribe to the Tech Tinkering YouTube channel.